In this video, we're going to be going over the process of loading and running a Fantasy Grounds adventure module. Uh, for the purposes of this video, we'll be using the 5th edition rule set and the excellent classic adventure against the giants. So to start off with, here we have our Fantasy Grounds desktop. And to start off, we need to uh, go ahead and load the adventure. So this is assuming you have already purchased the adventure and had it downloaded to your uh, to your machine. So we'll come down here to the library, click on the library, and our library window pops up. Here we can click on modules. You can see here I do not currently have any modules loaded, and I will search for against. All right, so here we have against the giants, which has popped up for me. So we'll go ahead and load that. And now I've got my adventure module loaded. Now, I do want to point out, you'll notice that I do not have the player's handbook, the dungeon master's guide, or monster manual loaded. And for most properly converted adventure modules, you will not need those. Uh, this is because the a properly done uh, converted adventure module will include everything that you need in order to be able to run that adventure. So for example, it will include all of the NPCs, all of the item records, uh, everything else that you might need to be able to run that adventure. So in this case, uh, against the giants will come with all of the NPC definitions and all of the encounter and, and parcels and everything that we need to be able to run it. So I don't need to have any of those other core books open um, unless I want them to uh, be available for reference. But for the purposes of this, of this video, we won't actually need them. All right, so the first thing that we'll want to do when we go ahead and uh, load up our adventure is take a look at this reference manual. Now, the reference manual is a digital version of the physical book. It'll include all of the information. It includes the pictures and images and all of that stuff. Now, something I like to do is I like to make a shortcut to that. So I'll drag this shortcut down to my shortcuts bar. I'll right click it to ch edit the label and I'll just say against the giants. This allows me to quickly access it um, without having to drill through the library again. Now when I click it, I will get the reference manual here. So in our reference manual, when we're looking through an adventure, the first thing you want to do is, of course, read through the text. Make sure you understand the adventure before you let your players connect to your table. Um, otherwise, there'll just be a lot of confusion. So starting off, we'll go ahead and uh, click through. You can see here there's the entries here on the side. Uh, the uh, Against the Giants was included as one of the adventures in Tales from the Yawning Portal. So if you've purchased the Tales from the Yawning Portal, it includes this Against the Giants adventure. And it has information about the adventures, how to run them, um, creating campaigns and such. So getting into the actual adventure, see uh, by opening up this this one, we've got some beautiful artwork here, information about uh, the background of the adventure. Read through all of this, make sure you understand it. Uh, coming here is other information on customizing things. And then we can get into actually looking at the, uh, the descriptions of the various encounters and the maps and all of that kind of information. So here we have, the beginning is the steading of the hill giant chief. So, of course, you'll want to read through all of this. And uh, you'll notice that it includes maps. Now, these images, you can actually click them and it'll open them up in their own window. So you can, uh, you can have access to them. And uh, some descriptive elements, uh, knowing uh, like the standard ceilings, doors, what the lighting of the area is like, um, and any descriptive areas as well. For each area within the, uh, within the map, they will all be numbered. Um, typically, most of the adventures come with pre numbers already assigned to them, and then the uh, descriptions are included in the book. So you can see here the same thing. They have the number of the area with the descriptive um, entries. And those descriptive entries include things like the treasure. They'll include things like uh, the NPCs that are available there or, or any anything visible that they uh, will need to uh, be described to the players. So all of that information is going to be located here. Um, 
in the, in the individual entries. So when we're ready to actually play, when we're ready to, to have our players join, you know, we've, we've read up on how to introduce the adventure and get them ready. So you go ahead and do that as a DM. And then when you're ready to actually run the, the combat, the maps, now we need to go ahead and take a look at our images and maps. So here we have uh, the images and maps window open. This is how we're going to take a look at the battle maps. Now, a lot of these adventure modules will either have just a single category. Some of them, like this one, are broken out. So you can see this one has a, a grouping of NPC images. So each of these might be NPCs uh, that they encounter that you can share with the players so they know what they're, what they're fighting. Uh, there's also one that's just generic images. This may be items, some magic items that you find, um, or other NPCs, uh, you know, generic things. You also notice that there's a set of DM maps and player maps. Now, many adventures will include both a DM map and a player map. Now, the DM maps are generally going to be a much lower resolution. So if I zoom in there, you can see the image gets bad pretty quick. Um, these are a low resolution image. These are not going to be used for your battle map. Uh, instead, these are going to be used just as a reference for the DM as you are running through the uh, a particular area. Now you'll notice these little red pins dotting the map. These are links to the direct uh, room descriptions. Um, so if I were to click on a pin here, the front gate and foyer, I can click it. And that will open up this story entry that contains all of the information I need to be able to run that front gate. It'll include any tables I need to move, roll from, any encounters that I need to, uh, to run, and uh, a link maybe to additional areas that are, are connected. So that's the DM map. Now there's also a player map, which will be similar except much higher resolution. So let's take a look at a player map here. So you can see here, this is significantly higher resolution. I can zoom in much further before the image uh, starts to degrade. And it has the same uh, red link. So as a DM, it's your uh, choice which one you want to use, um, which one is going to be most convenient for you. If you have players scattered all over the place uh, across multiple maps, it may help be helpful to use like the DM, which is a lower resolution, higher view map. Uh, a lot of times, the player's maps may be too large as you saw here on the on the DM's map, open this up. This covers quite a large area, and the player's map isn't uh, because it's a higher resolution. It it chops this this bigger map into several sections, and it, each player map only covers a, a smaller uh, set of area from uh, from the original map. So when we are going to be running this adventure. We, uh, we want to have our players added to our map. Let's say they're going to be running through. Let me adjust the size here a minute. I have my players added to my combat tracker. And uh, let's run through a sample encounter here. So I can quickly add my players, dragging and dropping them here onto my map. And my players are now ready to, to enter into the adventure. Now, the first thing that they're going to do is my players are going to walk through this door and into this, uh, this gate. Let me unlock my map so I can group my NPC, my player tokens, and let's say they enter into this room. Now, as the DM, I have this red pin. Now, players don't see the red pins, so they will not be able to see anything um, there. You can share the pins just by right-clicking on them and making the link shareable. Generally, there's no need to, though. So once we uh, click on that red pin, it opens up this story entry, which will contain, as I said, the information for this location. First off is a table with the giant's bags. This is in case they've encountered some, some giants. We can click on the table and we can roll an output. And it'll actually generate a parcel for us with the appropriate uh, treasure that I can add to the, the players, either inventory or to the party sheet. It also has an encounter record. Now, if I click on that encounter record, you can see here that there are check marks in the placement. Now, this means that those NPCs have been pre-placed onto this battle map. I can then run this combat encounter 
by quickly using this button to add them immediately to the combat tracker, which will also, because they're pre-placed, add them to the map. So I can just click on that and boom. Now you can see Hill Giant 1 and 2 have been added to the combat tracker. They have been added to the map. Uh, I can make mark them as visible. And now my players will have to interact with a couple of Hill Giants and figure out what they're going to do. Now let's say a, a rousing battle ensues. The players are victorious and they manage to kill all of the Hill Giants. Excellent. Great for them. And they go ahead and proceed on through Let's say they come on up into this room. Now we have a similar situation. We have the red pin. So let's open up the red pin. This will give us the information that we need for this area, the Great Hall. This is the Great Hall area. I've got an image that I can share with my players. So I can right click, share, share with a sheet. And this will share this image. This is what they see. Uh, it's a, a lovely uh, scene before them and there is an encounter. So let's see what kind of encounter my players are now going to be encountering. This looks to be a considerably more difficult encounter as we have cave bears, we have the chief, we have uh, a whole bunch of other giants and other things. Again, just like before, these have all been pre-placed. So a well done uh, module conversion will include pre-placing uh, wherever it's possible. Not all of them are, are possible, but uh, you can, uh, if they're well done, they can pre-place all of these. So we can add them as before, all to the combat tracker all at once. And that will place them onto the map. This is a rather full, you can see we have our combat tracker is now full of NPCs. And our map is full of uh, a wide variety of, our, of these NPCs. And then the players can decide whether they intend to fight or run away or negotiate or do whatever they want to do. If they are going to fight, all you do is come back here to your combat tracker and start initiative. Going to the next actor and process each one in turn. Um, the how to use the combat tracker was covered in another video, so we're not going to go over it again. But uh, when you are done with the, uh, the combat, you can go ahead and clear it out and that will automatically remove them from the map as well. And so this is uh, how you would go ahead and proceed through your adventure. As your players move around, in each location it has predefined, it has a information about what is there. If there is a parcel, for example, some treasure that they find, there will be a link to the parcel entry, which has the gold and any magical items or mundane items that may be included. These can be just added to the character sheet here on the inventory tab of the party sheet. We can add that parcel directly there and then the players will be able to take those items and uh, add them to their individual character sheets. And so that's how we process through running an adventure. We've loaded up the module, you go through and review everything in the, uh, the reference manual. Uh, when there are battle maps, you go ahead and uh, follow, you know, place the characters on the battle map, and as they proceed through, you load up each individual entry with its appropriate information. Now, if there are no battle maps, there are some that only have theater of the mind, there's no battle maps with that kind of uh, organization. All the information you're going to need is located here in these story entries instead. So we can come here and look at the grouping again. This is the first grouping uh, steading of the hill giant chief, and we can open this up. And here's an index which contains the various elements, uh, what's contained within this, this group. And these are all the individual room descriptions and, uh, and things, if you're not using a battle map for whatever reason. All of these things will be uh, prepared here in the, uh, in the story entries um, so that you can access them and they'll include the encounters so that you can run them on the combat tracker even if you're not using the, uh, the battle maps. Once you're done uh, running through your adventure, if you're going to be reusing the same characters in the same campaign file, you can just go ahead and unload that adventure module. Uh, by clicking here on the modules, you can see here it's very easy to have far too many and it, it can be a pain to try and hunt and find which one is actually loaded. So there's a, a quick way to filter that and that's just to click on this all button. And that will tell me just the ones that are currently loaded. I'm done running through this adventure. My players have completed everything, killed all the giants and, and were uh, grand heroes. And so I'll click unload 
and everything that I had loaded is now going to be gone away. And I can load my next adventure and run it with either the same characters or I can uh, run through a different set of characters. Thank you.